Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this is a fake GTX 1050 Ti. You should never support scammers or sellers who are selling dodgy components, but you'll be pleased to know I got this from an individual here in the UK who themselves had been ripped off. That's not a good thing, I mean I just probably did them a favour by taking it off of their hands. I paid a few pounds for this card which came with its own driver disc. Funny thing, actually, these drivers are the only ones that work with this card. If you let GeForce Experience update and choose to install the latest drivers, the system will crash. Because this card has been flashed with a custom BIOS, the GeForce software actually picks it up as a legit 1050 Ti, hence the availability of the newest graphics card software, but GPU-Z will instantly dismiss all of your hopes and dreams with a huge exclamation mark and fake label. This on the other hand, or in the other hand, is a GTX 1050 legit edition. Not its official name of course, but it is a real card, albeit a version that you might not have seen before. It's a single slot variant that requires no 6-pin connector, and if you go back a few videos you can watch my full review on it. Today, this card is being pitted against the imposter, as I thought it might be amusing to see how different they perform. Now we were off to a great start in Red Dead Redemption 2 and Rainbow Six Siege. In fact, I had to control alt delete out of this game and then this page froze as well, which led me to believe that I had totally burnt out my entire PC. With my concerns put to rest, or at least ignored, after a quick restart, I soldiered on. The problem here is that the fake 1050 is limited to what it can actually do, so we had to adjust the settings in games accordingly so that the real card could compete fairly. The fake GPU is also apparently a 106 watt component, so running it in a 75 watt PCI Express slot without an external power connector probably doesn't help things out, hence the crashes. Usually in GTA, it's just me crashing, but here the card took on that responsibility. I gave it another go, again with the same settings, but running in DX10 mode, and as expected, the same thing happened. So on the left side of the screen is the false 1050 Ti and uh, we're seeing about 40 to 50 frames per second most of the time which honestly isn't that bad at the normal settings with 1080p resolution. On the right we have the GTX 1050 Ti legit card which is running with at least 140 fps a lot of the time so yeah immediately there is certainly a noticeable difference between the two call of duty black ops ran fine though and managed to hit the 91 fps cap at 1080p low not a bad experience if i'm honest and one that was shared between both gpus the legit card is of course capable of higher settings and even a slightly higher bump in resolution if you wanted to but at least there were no problems with crashing during this test. The same can be said for our CSGO test. I always test this title on low anyway and it had no problem with running at over 100 fps a lot of the time. Why would they not equip this thing with a 6 pin connector though just for stability sake? GeForce Experience decided to then update again for some reason, so I let it happen, assuming that the system would just crash afterwards, but everything was fine. I really didn't expect too much of this card. However, while we are on the subject of crashing, Apex Legends also uh, sent me back to the desktop a mere few seconds after firing up the game. Crisis, however, the almighty GPU melter, ran wonderfully at medium. This is the original version of the game and not the 2020 remaster, which will perform fine at full HD on our imposter here. I played it for about 15 minutes with no issues and considering GTA 5 froze in about 15 seconds, I'd call this a victory. So what is this card? Well, the only way to find out is to remove the cooler, which reveals the GF106 250KAA1 GPU. It's basically a GTS 450. What's quite amusing is that I actually paid less for this than a second-hand GTS 450 costs right now on the used market. To eliminate, or to try and eliminate some issues, you could use Tech Power Up to download the correct BIOS for this card, in this case a 4 gig 450 BIOS, but even so, and as we've tested before, a GTS 450 these days isn't really going to offer you very good frame rates. Lower resolutions are your best bet, such as 720p, but I can't really recommend even a legit GTS 450 due to the problems that you'd likely face in modern titles, despite the amount of VRAM. I wonder if we'll ever get fake GTX 
sorry, RTX 3080s and what GPU they'd use. So there we go, scam graphics cards, not a good idea. Now if you're wondering why I'm wearing this hat, I'm not off to a 90s rave. Uh, my sister actually made this for me because I tried to cut my own hair because all my local hairdressers decided to shut again. But uh, yeah, I, th I think it looks quite good and she's actually made a few of these to sell. So I'm gonna leave a link to her latest video detailing how you can get one of these very limited edition hats if you want one. We might, we might make some more. Um, as far as merch is concerned as well. So yeah, I'll leave a link down below. But thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, leave a like on it down below. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.